Hi, this is Dick Pelland. Some of you have asked for some information on how to do routine service on these early 20th century repulsion start induction run motors that are used on the old blowers, whether they're Spencer or Kinetic. This one happens to be a Kinetic. I'm going to show you a couple of things first about where the problems are, or actually what the problem is. These motors use a set of four carbon brushes that are internally mounted inside the back of the starter unit. And when the motor is first started, the brushes are in contact with the commutator. They, and they provide the repulsive force to make the motor turn, to start turning. Once the motor is up to its almost its proper running speed, they will disengage centrifugally and then the motor runs on induction run which means the, the the starter windings are disengaged from the motor but this is what happens when the brushes are worn out or the mechanism is gummed up to the point where the starter will not lift off of the commutator and it continues to run on the starter windings What happens with that is that the motor never comes up to its speed and is drawing tremendous amounts of current through the brushes, wears the brushes out much quicker, and it scores up the commutator. So we have to take the back of the motor apart, and I will show you how we're going to do that. First thing, obviously, is to make sure that you're actually shut off. The back of the motor, the back bell of the motor, okay, is held on in this particular case by four hex head bolts. There's only four. They go through into the motor case about this far. When you remove that, the motor will not shift because it's held in place by the straps and the front shaft. So nothing's going to jump out at you. It's uh, it's pretty safe, pretty safe operation. I'm not sure how this would play out with a long shaft Spencer. I don't know if the weight of the motor would shift. So uh, take warning on that. Okay. So now we take out the last bolt. And pay attention to which side the oil trough is facing. So the cap is facing up. You don't want to tip it upside down because you're going to dump all the oil out onto the ground. So then once the screws are out, you put a screwdriver up against the corner of the bell and you just tap it with something light like the wrench you've been using. And I'll show you what happens because I, I have no way to uh, stand the uh, phone up here. Okay, there's the bell. Just there's the screw holes went right straight through, okay, and we just tap it, tap the bell, and you can see that it just it just pops right off. And it's sitting it's just sitting there on the shaft right now, and it's free. So we're gonna lift it off of here, we're just gonna take it off, and we're gonna put it over on a work surface. Okay, with the bell removed, you can see the commutator. This is what makes the connections for the repulsion start. And you can see the oil slinger and the spring for the centrifugal uh, switch is right there. Okay, so the commutator in this case is fairly clean because it was cleaned about a year ago. But I will show you how to clean it once we put it back together.
this is a pretty low budget operation here, so you have to bear with the poor lighting crew. Besides the fact that we're keeping our social distancing here and I don't have a, a grip to do this work for me. Okay, so now looking at the looking at the, the bell with the brushes in it. From the working side, you can see this one, two, three, four brushes. Now, let me tip this up a little bit, making sure we keep the oil facing up, and it is. Okay, you can see that the brushes are, each, each of the brushes is held in its little keeper. And you can see that there's like a, an, an accordion hinge here on each one of these. So this whole mechanism, when it comes up to speed, will snap back away from the commutator. The, the brushes will kind of skid against the commutator a little bit occasionally, but they're generally supposed to lift right off. There's a spring on top of each one of the brushes to push the brush is down against the commutator. Okay. So the other thing you'll notice is that these brushes are tapered. When you get new brushes from somebody like Helwig Carbon, they're going to be the right taper, but they're going to be too wide. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take the old brush and you're going to have to take the new brush, which is going to be this much wider, and you're going to have to run a money bandsaw to trim them off. But you trim them off so that the taper is correct. You match up the taper with the original and that's where you cut the, that's where you cut the brush. Next step would be to take some brake clean and clean out all of this stuff. Don't clean in here because it's all lubricated, but clean off all the brush holders and the old the old brushes. Take them out of there. Hold on a minute. This is non non-flammable brake clean. nice and clean and we'll let that dry off for a few minutes okay so there's a new brush there's a brush that's been cut down it's not the same color but it's it's from the same it's from a different batch it's been cut down with the tapered the small taper large taper small taper very large taper Okay, so since it's tapered way too much, you, you line the original up. Here's an original. You line the original up with the taper on the new brush, and then you cut off the excess. There's the four we're going to use. So you put them in their slots with the taper towards the center. Feel how they push against the spring? Oop. 
See how they push against the spring? Taper towards the center. Okay, now here's one little trick that'll help you from going insane. Look down the center of the opening where the shaft goes. See that ring in there? Okay, that's, that's the oil slinger. And as soon as you straighten this thing up, it's going to fall back down in your way again, and you won't be able to get the shaft on. Or, or I should say, you won't be able to get the bell all the way onto the shaft. It'll keep hitting that slinger. So what you do is you <coughs> straighten this thing up, turn it around, and try not to dump the brushes back out. And you lift up the oil cap and you use something like these and you stick it in there and you slip it underneath the oil slinger ring so that you just kind of lever it up a little bit. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this so I'm just going to put the phone down for a second. Okay. And there it is, and you can see this oil slinger ring is in there, and it's got the forceps are just stuck under it, just to lever it up. You could use a screwdriver, I suppose. All right, so now I'm going to take this back over there, and we're going to see what happens. See if we can slide it back onto the uh, back onto the shaft. Okay, so now we've got it set back on the shaft. And we've got the oil cap facing up. The brushes are in there. They're in their place. Now I should be able to slide this on carefully without dumping the brushes out of there. I can't do it with one hand, so you'll have to believe me. Okay, so with very little fiddling, it actually did go right in. So now we line up the screw holes and we can take and put a screw in and get the four screws started before we try to try to get it uh, leveled on here. Hold on. Okay, it bears mentioning here that these parts okay are that are on here these are cast iron okay so uh, it bears mentioning that you need to uh, be very careful when you tighten these up that you tighten up the four screws opposite each other pretty much the same way you tighten the head on the car and just a little bit at a time because undue stress in one direction or the other can crack these castings especially when they're this old so just tighten it all one screw at a time, quarter of a turn at the time, and just keep crisscrossing them until until the screws are nice and tight. And this has pulled all the way in, and there's no sign of the crease here. In fact, it should just line up. You can see the old scratch marks. It should just line up when I'm all done here. So I'm just going to put the phone down again and tighten this up. Okay, so the last step here is to clean the commutator and set the brushes. Now setting the brushes is an interesting procedure because what it uses is one of these brush commutator cleaning stones and it's 
It's uh, it's an H stone. It's a hard, and uh, it wears out pretty easily. It's meant to do that. So what you do is you press the stone against the commutator while it's turning. And I'll show you this a little bit better. When you do it with the motor off and then you turn the motor on at the same time, the stone material that is worn off of the stone by the rotating commutator flies between the commutator and the brushes and it burnishes them so that they fit together perfectly. It's like lapping valves on an engine. So you do that for three or four seconds or actually as long as it takes to start the motor and then you'll shut the motor off so that the brushes retract and then they're back down on the commutator and then you do it again. So you start it with the brush with the, with the motor off because you only got a few seconds to do it. Then after the motor is up to speed, then you can take this with a flashlight and you can put it on the commutator and you can run it, rub it back and forth across the radius of the commutator a few times, okay, pushing on it somewhat and that will wear, that will take off, that will clean off any grooves that are in the in the commutator, any roughness, any rough spots. Then you might want to reset the reset the brushes again just to make sure that they're perfectly flat. And you do that by shutting the motor off until they retract. Then put the stone back on the commutator, start the motor, and while the brushes are still in contact with the commutator, which only lasts for a few seconds, the brush the stone material will get between the brush and the commutator and it will smooth everything together and so let's see if I can actually figure out how I can do this and show you uh, let's see Once they retract, I can put it back down on the on the it again, and it will get the material between the brushes and the commutator. There. So we should be good to go for another hundred years. And one final start. I think we're done.